From Las Vegas, it's The Q. Covering EMC World 2016. Brought to you by EMC. And welcome back to Las Vegas. We're inside the Sands Expo here at EMC World 2016, continuing our coverage here on theCUBE. We're talking about big data. It's a big deal these days and what to do with it. That's a quandary for a lot of businesses from looking at analytics and trying to make sense of all that data they have at their disposal. With us to talk about that is the Dean of Data, Bill Schmarzo, <laughs> who is the CTO of Global Services at uh, EMC. Bill, glad Thank to have you. you with us here. Thank you very much. Also with us, John Kennefeck, who is the VP of IT and the CIO at the Pachanga Resort and Casino in Temecula, California. And John, thank you for being here. Glad to be here. And uh, Ray Ciza, who's the CIO of uh, Tim Brazil, the second largest wireless carrier in Brazil, 75 million subs. And uh, Ray, thank you as well for joining us here. Thanks, so Bill, before we jump in, let's talk about big data projects that, that EMC did for both of, of uh, uh, the gentlemen's companies here. What is a project all about? What are the pieces of that? And ultimately, what do you want to deliver to the customer? So the, let, me, let me kind of reverse that, that question. And the, the, what we focus in on is outcomes. It's really key that we understand what kind of business outcomes you're kind of drive and who the key stakeholders are in the organization. That understanding of the outcomes we're trying to drive, the, the business initiatives we're going after, the decisions we're trying to support, help us to filter down to all the, the more difficult decisions regarding the architecture and the technology. So it's very much focused on the business conversation. And what I want to do is to start this conversation, Ray, and I'll start with you, is to share with us, for, for uh, Tim Brazil, what were the business problems you were going after or the business outcomes you were trying to drive? Really, we address uh, two different topics. The first one was uh, network enhancement. So, uh, how is possible to optimize the investment in network with big data? And the second one uh, is a, a reduction of churn and increase of output. That's a, a classic uh, topic for a telco operator. Mm -hmm. But uh, really with big data, it's possible to manage uh, uh, this topic uh, in real time. Yeah. Normally, uh, in, uh, the, with data warehouse, it's not possible to manage in real time way. So we address two different topics in the first phase of the project. And in this moment, uh, uh, big data is a core of our digital architecture. Mm -hmm. In particular, we have three different layer, hot layer in memory grid, and warm layer green plan uh, database, and uh, cold layer, that is Icylon. And uh, we have a, a, um, in memory grid there's a boundary between classical architecture of IT, like CRM and billing, and the digital uh, architecture. And so we have all the information that we need in order to, uh, to conversation with outside of team, like with app and so on, in our in memory database in order to manage in millisecond the relationship with outside. And this is too pitch, but I think that uh, we, we have to have another topics uh, that is related to uh, product leadership uh, or uh, in other, in other words, uh, data monetization. Yes. But uh, I have that we have to study <laughs> all <Yeah>. these <laughs> top topics. Very good. <laughs> hey, John at Pachanga. What was your area of focus? What were you trying to achieve with your big data initiative? Uh, gosh, what weren't we trying to achieve? <laughs> um, I mean, from, from a casino perspective, we're very, very data driven, and um, we, we wanted to take that, this next evolutionary step, and um, you know, big data was a, a logical avenue to take. And you know, for us, you know, customers are our business, and getting to know those customers better was extremely important. And, Aggregating large amounts of data, you know, in a centralized location where we could really get a holistic view of, of that player, not just with their gaming habits, but where they potentially were spending their money in other areas of the property was important. And it's a dream we've had for years. Um, the technology wasn't quite there, and, and and now we're there, and it's it's just really exciting, you know, where that where that's taking us. Excellent. Now, so I still hear from lots of companies that they don't know how to build interest on the business side in this big data initiative. 
John, what is, what is it you guys did at Pachanga to sort of get the business people engaged? Buy-in, um, getting everybody together to feel like they were part of the process and engaged. Uh, you know, we did the data vision workshop yep. uh, with EMC, which I think was a, a really good stepping stone uh, to, to getting that accomplished. You know, even from an organization as large as ours, having the top level executives also interacting with even line level team members and getting them involved in the process and understanding you know, how a big data could potentially help their, you know, what they do on a daily basis was huge. And um, at the end of the day, it really, I think, took hold because of that. Yeah, I think because big data is a team sport. It is, it's right? not just an IT initiative, it's a, it's a complete property initiative and getting everybody on board and, and getting that buy-in is, is big. Excellent. Ray, what did you do at Tim Brazil in order to, to sort of help champion this initiative and, and, and make it real for the, not only the IT people, but also the business people? Really, we, we uh, began to, with a with the gap analysis because uh, the idea is to understand uh, uh, and to identify uh, the project that we need in order to uh, reach our goal. Yep. And uh, with the uh, data scientists of EMC, uh, with uh, our uh, users, we uh, became to do a uh, gap analysis. Okay. And, uh, and uh, after we identify the project in uh, that uh, have a short time elapsed, because the idea is, uh, uh, was uh, to finance innovation with innovation, and so the approach was a shrink the change approach. So we, we chose the project that uh, uh, have a, a, a little lapsed and okay. a, bigger, a bigger result uh, for business. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to, uh, to involve the users and the, the other part of the company. And uh, the, the approach was a gradually approach because we start with uh, Pivotal Hadoop and after step by step we increase uh, until uh, to arrive uh, IC on the memory grid uh, and green pillar. And uh, in parallel, we implement uh, a sandbox approach okay. in order to have a, a, an agile approach on the development. That's so, it, so, go ahead. Oh, so, so, <coughs> so what did you find out, Ray, then, in terms of, you're talking about you're producing churn and, and raising your average, average revenue you know, per user here. I mean, what did you put in the practice? What did you find out from the data maybe that you weren't expecting or was a bit of a surprise and that you've been able to put into uh, you know, increased revenues and then lowering that churn rate on your networks? But that's the, 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 in order to manage the churn, it's, it's important to, to, to manage in short time the action of upselling and cross-selling on the customer. And so that's clear that uh, man, if we manage the the observation of our uh, DB, our uh, behavior of the customer in, uh, in memory and uh, big data, okay. it's possible to, uh, to achieve this result in short time. So this, there was no doubt that there is a lot of, of, of education going on on the value of big data sure. and getting the business users and stakeholders to buy into the process. Mm -hmm. John, what kind of challenges did you guys face at Pachanga in order to get this thing sort of off the ground and going? I mean, for us, I, we're, we were experienced with working with data, but uh, we, didn't, we didn't have the, uh, the infrastructure in place in the organization to be able to, to really work with big data, and that was a transformation process for us. Okay. You know, building uh, governance councils within the organization, so we have, we have teams of people that are are responsible for you know, making sure that the, the use cases are, are going and they're measuring those. And, and then at the end, you know, at least twice a week they meet back with our analytical governance council where we basically discuss you know, how, how those use cases are moving and also to discuss any new use cases that we want to, they want to bring to the table. And it, it works out pretty well. We didn't have that structure in the organization before. And uh, we also have representation uh, across the organization at those council levels. So it's, it helps out, it really does help us out in making you know, sound business decisions around big data. So Ray, if you had to give advice to somebody out there who's trying to figure out where and how they start their big data journey, 
What are the sort of bullet points that you would share with these people to say about how to get going here? Uh, it's important to, to switch the mindset uh, of the user because uh, uh, we start, uh, generally the approach is a waterfall approach, but uh, we, we need to start in a different uh, way and different methodology, agile methodology with, uh, how I say, uh, sandbox yeah. and so yeah. on. So every, every user in team uh, has a sandbox and uh, they, works, they work on prototyping for every area, a different area of team and uh, it with the data scientists of, uh, of EMC and uh, architect of uh, EMC and after uh, we uh, implement a use case, a different use case that are output of, uh, of prototyping. That's clear that in the first phase, uh, uh, everybody uh, understand in uh, in worst way that the, the big data is a data warehouse. That is yeah. a different. Yeah. We have, there is a, a, a completely <laughs> different approach uh, because uh, that's clear that we, with big data we have more opportunity <laughs> than uh, than data warehouse. So we raise a good point, and John, I'm going to put you on the spot in this one. Okay. Big data is different than a data warehouse. And in fact, a data warehouse mentality can slow you down. Right. You had a really solid data warehouse organization. We did. Yep. How, did you, how did you morph that group to get them to start thinking more like data scientists? Well, you know, for us, it was wanting to understand our customers in real time, where in the past, and I think traditionally for most casinos, it's you, know, you market your customers after the fact. Yes. And we wanted to get more predictive and, and, and be able to target those customers in real time. And we're making those steps now, which is really exciting uh, to be able to, to look at patterns and to see what's happening on the floor. And maybe not just the, the gaming element, but you know, how else they're interacting with our property. And to be able to you know, hit those touch points with the guests that they come into our property and maybe they don't come back. Yes. And we don't ever know why. It would be nice to, to be able to interact with that guest you know, prior to that and really understand you know, maybe there's, there's something we can do to, to have an interaction to, to keep them as a long-term customer. So yeah. we weren't able to do that before and we're in a position now where we can and that to me is, is, is really exciting. So if I, if I take your story about the sandbox and use cases and your story about how to move from being you know, about reporting, it's really about how do you and excite the business about creating a predictive organization right. so you can make better decisions regarding churn and networks and, mm -hmm. and customer play and how they're spending the money across the, across the casino. Right, right. I mean, even like with, uh, with, with casinos, we typically, uh, we have segmentation with our players and usually based on the play, they get dropped in certain categories. And you know, I have this vision of singular segmentation and we, we couldn't do that before. It would, you know, the humans couldn't sit there and be able to market <laughs> like that. So now you know, the machines were able to build logic in there that can look for patterns and, and predict things and we can get to that point where we'll get to singular marketing, which I think is huge, because not everybody's equal. That's right, uh, yeah, I very much agree. Yeah, to the question really that Bill posed to, to Ray just a little bit ago too, um, if you were talking to perspective, uh, maybe, even maybe in, even in your own space for that matter, sure. we are in Las Vegas, right? Sure, sure. Um, uh, the fact that you could be forward thinking and, and react yeah. in real time, uh, it seems to be just a, a paradigm shift in how you approach like a no your brainer. business. And, and how, <laughs> right, for, and, and, but not just in the casino business. Yeah. Right, in retail yeah. space, financial services, you name it. I mean, right. to be able to react to a customer uh, in real time seems to be like that's the golden pass right there. I agree, I, I, it's, just, it's a journey. Um, you know, you have to go through iterations and processes and I, I think that's, you know, it, it's teaching people, you know, particularly in my industry, there's a, a lot of people that have a certain way of thinking uh, and getting them to essentially think outside the box and look outside of our vertical and what's happening and, and getting that buy-in, uh, getting people on board to understand you know what what big data is about. Um, I, I like to call it little data sometimes because I think it's just getting down to minute details of, yes. of right. players and whatnot, at least in our world. But um, yeah, it, it it does seem like a no-brainer. But 
you know, sometimes there's a little bit of an education process with the organization, well, so I equate it to a journey. You've got the dean educated. The you dean. What more do you we need right dean. now? And a professor <laughs> too at the same time. <laughs> I, I want to thank you all for coming on. And Bill, I know uh, you've been involved. We have a little March Madness here on theCUBE. Yes. And you've been a participant. I mean, maybe not willingly, but you have been. <laughs> what do we got to do to get you to the mountaintop? I don't know. I just got to keep building a number of followers and uh, <laughs> help help the clients being successful. And that's yeah. probably the best thing we I We got to expand yeah. that network a little bit. <laughs> Good deal. Big data Thanks, working guys. well for Tim Brazil and uh, Pachanga. We appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you both. We'll Thanks continue with our coverage here from EMC World 2016 in Las Vegas. In just a bit, you are watching theCUBE.